As a sales leader, one of the things that you find that you, you come across sometimes is salespeople not willing to do what you guide them to do. Now, sometimes, not saying all the time, sometimes it just so happened that you're telling them to do one thing while you are doing another thing. I know, it's cutting deep. We're going to explain this to you today and how you could go about fixing that. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of Sales Evangelist Podcast here on TSC TV on YouTube. I'm your host, Mr. Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we have Mr. Ruben Alvarez. And Ruben runs an amazing organization. You're going to hear a little bit more about that today. But before that, Ruben had led a sales team under great management and also under not great management. Today, he's going to talk to us about this concept as do as I do, not as I say. And why, as a sales leader, how how you can fix that. You've been listening to different episodes talking about how to lead your sales team. Ruben is going to come and deliver some amazing stuff to, the, to you today. And speaking about deliver, if this is your first time watching one of our videos, please go ahead and hit subscribe and hit that little chime button. And every time we do a video, you're going to get it delivered to your inbox. I promise you. Let's go ahead and listen to Ruben. And not just do it, but do it effectively. Right? So if you're like, make 100 calls, right? And then like, you're, you're telling them 100 calls, 100 calls, 100 calls. You get on the phone and you make five, right? <laughs> you're, still, you're still doing it, right? But there's no respect be- behind the number 100 anymore. Yeah. They're just like, I, I should just make five like this guy. So a lot of the times I've noticed that like sales leaders, especially they go, you know, why aren't you hitting your quota? But they get put into a, a position of management to where they're no longer selling. And if their requirements of their salespeople are so unrealistic, they're going to be like, these are unrealistic. And the only people that can do them are, are like your the people in your mind, right? And if you can show them that they're possible to do, then they might actually go through with them. But if you're just all talk, there's no, they're, they're never going to do them because they're like, unless there's, there's a ton of money involved. Yeah. Right? Like you're going to get one or two people that do it. But other than that, everybody's going to be like, it's not doable. It's not possible until you actually show them. Yeah, they're like, that dog don't bite. Um, cause, yeah. <laughs> It's like that vanity. Pretty much any other industry, right? You look at a basketball player like Michael Jordan. If he's telling his teammates to put up stuff, like put up points, get rebounds and stuff, and he's not doing any of the work, it's not going to really be as effective. So if if you're like, okay, well, well, how do I start? How do I encourage? How do I motivate? Right? You get one sale. That, that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with, like, the people's um, numbers or anything, right? Because there's there's places where it's like, okay, well, it's a collective, and then the, the sales leader brings, like, 80%, and then everybody's all happy. Like, big deal, right? That, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, like, everybody has their own commission structure. Everybody has their own things. But if you have a sale, and you come out, and everybody knows that that person is, like, by far the hardest person to work with. Nobody wants them. You get on the phone, and you close them, and they're happy. Go tell them exactly what you did. Right? Like a little meeting. Hey, you know, I was just with this guy. I know you guys all know him. This is what he said. This is how it went around. If you can even record it, even better. Mo- most people are so afraid of recording themselves. I know that that was a problem for me. Where you put an actual recorder and then you say like, oh, this is what my voice is. I'm all self-conscious at first, right? <laughs> most people don't want to do it. But if you actually do the recording and it's effective and then you show it for your team you're not only getting the respect of hey this guy actually did it but this guy actually has you know some some courage behind him i don't want to say the other word (laughs) but he has courage behind him right and um and he has courage enough to actually record himself and then show us maybe you stumbled a few times maybe maybe the customer like you know said something you're like "Uh, uh, uh let me think about it bob right but at the end if you did it effectively it's still better than if you never showed the recording So there, there's ways that people are going to say, I, I, I trust this guy. He's the real deal. But they will not know that if everything you do is behind closed doors. It's, it's, it's kind of like that idea of being a, uh, I, the, I guess the first word that comes to mind is vulnerability. If, <laughs> if, that, like if, somebody you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, because in the beginning, right, um, I, I, w- I think I was 25. Yeah. And I'm 29 now, right? And and I think I was 25 when I hired the first person. And a lot of it was like, okay, well, if, if they see me stumbling 
or if they see that I'm not closing or if they see that somebody chewed me out or something like that, then they're not going to believe that I'm actually Ooh, the leader, right? Dang, bro. But the biggest the biggest thing, and, and I heard this from somebody else who I brought on my podcast. Her name was Jennifer. She said, leaders basically just inspire hope, <laughs> right? Ho- hope that, that it'll be better. Hope that you can do the same thing. Hope that, that like, it's going to be as good as it is for them as it is for you, right? Or even hope that, like, hey, the person's going to say no, but it's going to be all right, right? Like, it doesn't matter. So the the biggest thing is like in the beginning you're so afraid of them seeing who you really are but it doesn't matter who you are what matters is results like that's all sales is right sales is results you can say like oh man like i feel really good about myself and i made you know 50 calls today and they're all leads it's like but it doesn't really matter what matters is like did you close them so at the end of the day you can you can be vulnerable you can have somebody chew you out you can have air, all that happen but the moments that I noticed that my teams actually really looked up to me was was I could have gotten chewed out the day before. The guy calls back, puts in a huge order. They didn't care that I got chewed <laughs> out. They're like, dude, you got this huge order, right? Oh my god, how'd you do that? And I'm like, I don't know, dude. Like I just I listened to him. I didn't I didn't talk back. I just let him kind of like bend out his feelings and I said, okay. You know? And that's that's really what people are looking for. It's like, did you actually deliver on what you said you would do? Um, I had somebody in, in the marketing field um, that was reaching out to me yesterday, and it's the first time we connected on LinkedIn. And he goes, the values that you know each person has. Right? Like, so some people might make 100 calls, right? some people might not. But you know who actually can make the 100 calls. And I'm not saying like go to one person and say 50, go to another person and say like make 100 and like do it that way because it's not going to be fair. You know what I mean? But if everybody should be making 50 calls and you know one person's like, oh, you know what? I didn't make 50 calls and they start going off on like, you know, why their cat died and all this other stuff. Like don't don't, don't let that be a reason for them to, to stop doing it because I had a guy on my team that he was very, very good when he was concentrated, right? But when he started making excuses, he just wouldn't do it. And so I challenged him. I was like, dude, listen, if you make 100 calls, I can't even remember what I told him, but I was like, if you make 100 calls, we'll do this and we'll do this, right? <laughs> and dude, he made 100 calls. And I'm like, okay, so look, like, I know you can make the 100 calls. And he goes, yeah. He's like, but I don't want to do it daily. And I'm like, well, why not? And then he started going off until like, well, it's not worth it. You know, people aren't even answering all this other stuff. And I'm like, but it's just pretty much a motivation factor for you because you've shown me that you can do it in a day. It's just not worth it for you every day. So it might be something that it's it's paid. It might be motivation. It might not make sense to them. But at the end of the day, you know what your people are capable of, right? That That's why you're in that position is not only to give them hope, but also to see what's like the yeah. best parts of them. So if they're able to sell and they're able to do it effectively, maybe one of the people just doesn't know how to close. And you're saying, oh, you got to make more calls. Yeah. That, that's not it. You know, you you know what's best for them. The 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 owner might be like, hey, no, I need them to make more calls. Yeah. You know that it's not that. So don't compromise on it. Just tell him like, hey, if that's what it's gonna be, he's gonna keep doing the same things. And and you know, since we are getting to the end of it, that's one of the biggest problems that I had in this business is that the owner had an idea of what sales should be because he was in business to consumer sales prior to this business. So it was like dish sales direct tv all that stuff you know where it's like people would cold call make a ton of calls a day and then they would get a result based on the on the close and so what happened is he he assumed that it was just the same and we were b2b right and it was the same people that we were calling over and over it was the installation companies every year i think like in every state maybe like 10 to 15 new companies came up so it wasn't a lot of new people that we were calling everybody had already heard of the business so instead of saying like hey we need to just keep drilling the phones it was like we'll drill the phones maybe for two weeks and then we're gonna go visit people and he was super against that he was like no like that's not what what we're gonna do because it costs money and blah 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 and i was like if we keep calling the same people we're gonna lose sales and so we got into this big argument but as as the person who is put in that position it might suck for you and you might get an earful but you need to do that and if the salespeople again if they see that you're not doing something that should be done they're gonna say calling this many times is stupid you're not doing it. You're not doing anything for me. Yeah, I'm gonna leave, or I'm gonna put out minimal work. In that sense, yeah. too, like if you're, if they're just, yeah, you, you, you tell them to do something. At any given point in time, to take back control, is call someone randomly. Yeah, and just, just see what happens, and you'll feel so much better after that. Like even, even if you don't make a call after that, you're just gonna be like, I'm glad I made that call. <laughs> 
they they chewed me it. out. I did it, but I, I did, did it, it, and I feel good. <laughs> uh, Ruben, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best yeah. way for them to go about doing so? Uh, LinkedIn uh, is a good way if they just look up Ruben Alvarez. I'm I'm starting to become one of the top ones under that name because it is very um, uh, yeah. Forgot what the word, but it's congested, right? And then also uh, easiest way, RubenAlvarez.com. Are you being? We're excited Alvarez. to have you on the show today. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here, man. That was Ruben Alvarez. If you want to connect with Ruben, listen, I want you to go find him on LinkedIn. Actually, don't even go find him. We have the link right here. Just go down below. You can check out the link. You can see it down there. As well as, I want you to go onto our website if you need it that way. You can find him there as well. Um, I'm telling you, dude is an amazing guy. Uh, I've learned a lot from him. And he's coming on our other podcast as well as a guest on Selling in Color. So I want you to connect with him. Great individual. Um, find him on LinkedIn. And take advantage of some of the tips that he gives you today. I know it's going to help you. As always, you know we give you amazing things. You know we give great insights. You know our sponsors are giving out good stuff. So I want to find out why in the world you ain't taking advantage of it. And if you haven't left us a review yet for our podcast, please go ahead and do so. Do it on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a review and also leave us a you know a simple rating. It just it goes a long way. It makes us know we're doing something good, that you're appreciating it. Thank you so much. Um, but go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already on YouTube. I share this with you because I want you to succeed. I want you to take advantage of the sponsorship offers that our sponsors are giving, the great deals. I want you to be able to know what to say when you reach out to your customer and how to find them. I want you to be able to build the value. I want you to go out with that belief every single day that you can do big things. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are gonna help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.